Hi there. I'm so happy to let you know that today is the day you get to meet artist Emily Reed and Mr. Beefy. So let's get started. Hey everybody, it's great to have you with us here today. We're so excited to have artist and educator Emily Reed joining us. She's gonna share some tips she uses to create her beautiful and whimsical paintings. Emily has a little farm and a wonderful bunch of friends who live there with her, including Mr. Beefy. Before we visit with Emily, let's talk a little bit about what's happening with George and Josephine. If you haven't read this week's passage or listened to the podcast, now would be a great time to pause the video and go ahead and do that. So where are George and Josephine now? In this episode, George and Josephine have reached Las Vegas, Nevada. In 1914, Las Vegas was a very different place from the city we see today. In 1900, the population of Las Vegas was 22. That's right, 22 people, and it wasn't even officially a city yet. Las Vegas became a city in 1905, and by 1950, the population of Las Vegas had grown to over 24,000. Can you guess what the population of Las Vegas is today? That's right, the answer is 2,699,000 people. So when George and Josephine arrived in Las Vegas, it was a real sight to see the seven saloons. They even snapped this picture for their diaries. You'll notice in this passage of the diaries that much of their attention is devoted to working on a new pack saddle. Why do you suppose having a good pack saddle was so important? That's right, because the burros are carrying a heavy load and having the weight distributed in a more comfortable way makes it easier for the burros to make the long journey. We have some links on the extras worksheet where you can learn more about the types and parts of pack saddles. Check it out. Now let's work through this week's vocabulary. Our first word this week is overland. Overland is an adverb and means over or across the land. Our next word this week is chisel. Chisel is a noun and means a wedge-like tool with a cutting edge at the end of the blade, often made of steel. Next up this week, pack saddle. Pack saddle is a noun and means a saddle specifically designed for holding or supporting the load on a pack animal. Our next word, is canvas. Canvas is a noun and means a closely woven heavy cloth of cotton, hemp, or linen used for tents, sails, etc. Our next word this week is rivet. Rivet is a noun and is a metal pin for passing through holes in two or more plates or pieces to hold them together. Next up this week is canteen. Canteen is a noun and means a small container used especially by soldiers and hikers for carrying water or other liquids. Next up this week is watercress. Watercress is a noun and means a cress of the mustard family, usually growing in clear running streams and having pungent leaves. Our final word this week is lasso. Lasso is a noun and means a long rope or line of hide or other materials with a running noose at one end used for roping horses, cattle, etc. Great job on the vocabulary. And now the moment you've been waiting for it. Let's go visit with Emily Reed on her farm where she shares some tips to help you with making your art. Grab your journals so you can jot down some notes and let's go. Hi, my name is Emily Reed and I'm an artist and art educator and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about uh, how I make art and maybe it'll help you make your own art so um, anyway I mostly paint animals and um, one of my favorite things to do is to paint more than one painting at a time 
because have you ever worked on something and you get frustrated and kind of stuck but you still want to make art that's a good time to start a second piece so that's one of my favorite tips for um, making artwork and also um, I really enjoy uh, all different colors and so even though I paint animals um, sometimes I just change the color so like on this painting I have um, like the normal colored animals you know brown bear and a black and white badger and a blue scrub jay um, but on this painting um, I decided to paint my squirrel red and my rabbit blue and um, and you can do whatever you want. So um, one of the things too about uh, making art is um, just kind of doing it however you want to do it instead of how you think people will see it. Um, so that's that's a second tip. When I when I paint, I um, paint the backgrounds first. So if you're wondering where to start, um, figure out maybe what color you want to start with. Like I started with the blue, and I painted the blue background first. And, um, and then once you get your background where you want it, then it's time to start on the subjects. And, um, and the cool thing about painting, well actually almost anything in art, but um, painting in particular is, if you, if you don't like it, just wait for it to dry and, um, and do it again. It's like a haircut. If you don't like your haircut, just wait for it to grow out and then you just do it again. It's no big deal. So. Um, um, another thing is, a lot of times, if we think we're good artists, sometimes it's scary trying something new because if we don't do it well, then um, then we think maybe we're not good artists anymore because we did like one bad art thing. I've, I've, I'm like guilty of that. Sometimes I'll paint someone like, oh, so bad. And that's a good time to just learn from it and then, and then just work through it. So if you feel like you're a good artist and you're sometimes scared to try new things, like maybe trying new subjects or new mediums that's it it's a good learning opportunity it'll just make you that much better don't be afraid okay and um let's see take a step back and if you like the way it looks keep going and if you don't then it, you could change it up so color is color is great for so many reasons um it can it could change the mood of a painting it can make it happy, it can make it sad, it can make it lively or sleepy. And um, don't be afraid to experiment with color. So try out a color, see how it makes you feel, and then, and then maybe experiment. Like what happens when I add this other color to it? So I'm adding this white and it got a lot softer, right? And then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna see what happens when I add this. And how does it change? One thing that I love to do is just take a set of watercolors or colored pencils and, and, and go through and just start mixing each color and make like a little chart and keep the chart. You can refer back to it. I actually literally did that with one of my classes this week. We mixed all the colors. So, um, so art, you don't even have to make something when you're doing art. You could just experiment. That's so fun to do. I love doing that. Okay, so as artists, um, different things inspire us to make art. And um, I like to paint a lot of chickens, so it's nice having some <laughs> that live near. But when you see something that you like, you can make a little note in your journal, um, take a picture with your phone. If it's in a magazine, you could tear it out. But um, think of a way that you can save and hold on to something that really makes you want to start creating. And, um, and then you might have better luck with how your artwork turns out. I hope you enjoyed meeting Emily and her crew. You can find out more about Emily and her art at www.emilyreadart.com. That's it for this week. Be sure to check out all the worksheets and extras. You can find the links through the University Libraries or the Washoe County Libraries. 
See you next week when George and Josephine are in Indian Springs, Nevada.